Okay, so this is the client's everyday genius model. So I want to first off um, give the credit where credit is due. I learned this from Simon Bowen and he um, and I went back and forth on this a few times and I have since refined it even further. So um, make this a little smaller. So the idea behind the genius model is that it is a three circle Venn diagram. And the thing that you want most is what is in the center and that's clients every day. Okay, so that's the most desired result. This model is geared towards people that are selling uh, coaching, consulting, service businesses like agencies, things like that. That's what this is. Uh, this model is is uh, most suited to sell. Okay, so <clears throat> the three main pedals in the genius model are clarity, campaigns, and context. Okay, and there are three projects that have to do with each of these things, okay? And so what you have inside each of these areas and how they tie together is there are things that overlap. So for instance, having clarity in your business is one of the key projects that you need to achieve for your business to eventually get to having clients every day. You've also got to have campaigns and, a, and eventually once you achieve controlling the context in which you're viewed, then you can um, achieve uh, some of these more important things at scale for longer periods of time. So if you have clarity and you have campaigns together, so if you have if you have this and you have this, then the byproduct of that is that you're gonna have a flood of opportunities. Okay, and what that means practically is that you're gonna have lots and lots of people wanting to talk to you about the thing that you do because you've got clarity about what you do and then you have campaigns, which are putting the word out there and amplifying your message, okay? Then the next step is if you have campaigns and you have context, then you're going to have effortless conversion. And I'll talk about that in just a second, but ultimately if you're bringing all these people to you and they see you as the um, industry leader or the 800 pound gorilla in the industry, then it is much easier to close them on working with you. And then lastly, if you have clarity and you have context, then you have premium pricing. Okay, so when you have this status and um, this, uh, I'll explain what context means in a minute, but when you have this, this level of status in the market and you have clarity about what you do, then you're able to charge a premium price for your product, coaching, consulting, or service, okay? So that is sort of the <clears throat> overarching piece of this. So what are the three uh, projects inside of clarity that you have to have? Well, you have to have clarity first off about your value. You have to have clarity about your business 
and then you have to have clarity by your numbers. Okay. So why don't we, uh, I'll go through and I'll tell you what all nine projects are, and then I'll come back to them one by one. So the first project uh, under campaigns is, is uh, uh, acquisition campaigns. This is to acquire customers. Then you have to have Ascension campaigns. This is where you turn customers into clients. And then you have retention campaigns. This is where you keep clients for long periods of time and have them refer and take care of your tribe. Then lastly, under context, you have character, credibility, and connection. Okay. And so <clears throat> those are the nine projects to building. In my experience, when you build out all nine of these, almost every time you end up with an eight figure company. Um, and unless you by design want to have a lifestyle business that is smaller than that or something along those lines. So let's look into the first of the three projects inside of Clarity. Clarity about your value, okay? So why don't I go to another page here and talk about Clarity for a minute. Okay, so Clarity about your value breaks down like this. It is all about your message, your market, and your offer, okay? So, the, the first thing that you choose generally here is your, your market. And so this is who you want to work with. Okay. So your, your clarity about your market is important because if you, there are, like most people when they're getting started, especially, they, um, they work, like the, the big mistake that everybody makes is, is, is they work with everybody. So it's like, um, you know, out of the pie here, it's like if, you know, anybody can jump in and, and work with you. So then what that does is that makes it very difficult to advertise properly and to um, make your, um, uh, your offering very specific and exclusive. And the big mistake that everybody makes uh, that always happens is to be too broad, okay? And the, there's an old saying, broad, broad equals broke, okay? And so what you wanna do is you want to take this circle and you wanna start eliminating people out of the circle. So, so, you know, am I gonna, like, this is just easy to do. Am, am I working with men or women here, right? So, so let's say that uh, whatever my thing is, I only wanna work with women, so men are out, okay? So then that makes it easier to target uh, who it is and I'm not gonna waste money. And then if I decide to work with women, what if I'm working with, uh, you know, these are single women and these are married women. And so I decide I'm not going to work with single women. I only want to work with married women. Okay. Then I decide, okay, I only want to work with married women who have, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, uh, no kids, um, which is like, um, what do they call it? Um, Dinks, double income, no kids, or or kids, right? So you you start to narrow it down even more, and now I'm just working with Mary. Uh, 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 now I'm just working with uh, married women with kids. Okay, right. So you think that by eliminating all these other people here that you are um, actually um, depriving yourself of the market. But the truth is, is that 
this, this group right here, Married Women with Kids, is a humongous group of people. And it is actually quite a powerful group of people when it comes to spending. So this would be a great market. You could even further limit your, your uh, offering here by age of the kids or by age of the women. In other words, maybe you only wanna work with women who have teenage kids because of your thing, or maybe you only wanna work with women who have elementary school age kids because you're gonna work with them for a long period of time. Um, or any number of things like that, that um, would narrow down. Can you please, please close that door since I'm recording here? Um, any number of things like that, that would narrow down um, the market. And the reason that you wanna narrow down the market is because of the second thing that is involved here in understanding your value and having clarity on your value is your message. Okay, so, so um, well, let me back up for one second. So understanding and having clarity on your value here, one of the reasons that that's important is some of the questions that you can ask yourself. There's, there's lots of people you can work with, right? So let's ask ourselves a couple of questions that can find our most valuable, I don't know if that's how you spell it, valuable result to the best customer, okay? So first question is what is the most transformative thing that I can do for somebody? Like what is my biggest um, uh, uh, magic power that I can help somebody with? And, and maybe along the lines of what we're talking about here, maybe you are able to help mothers and daughters to communicate better so that they don't hate each other because most mothers and daughters have a really hard time, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, with it, once they get in their teens and all this sort of stuff, right? So the, the second question along those lines, like what's the most valuable transformation that you can help occur is are there any triggers that I can see in the marketplace that I could use as marketing tools for this market? In other words, is there something like say for instance, it is going to college and the mom is going, you know, about to send the daughter off to college for the first time, or maybe it's prom, or maybe it's talking about sex, or I don't know, but are there any external triggers that I can, that I can identify and target in my marketing that would allow me to identify this best customer, okay? And why that's important is if there aren't any, then it's going to be harder to identify them and advertise to them. Number three is what if I think back to my uh, times I've worked with um, clients, what is the, the best result with the least amount of work that you're able to provide. So if, if, if you have to move a mountain to get this result every time, then it's going to be challenging for that to be your front end program. However, if you are able somehow to get this person a powerful result in a short amount of time with less work, then this is going to point you to 
your hot front end offer. Okay. But you define, you find and discover these together with the work that you're doing here on Clarity. So if you think about it, what result can you get for this perfect customer, this best customer? Are there any, are there any uh, similarities between these customers in situation, stage of life, demographics, et cetera, that allow you to get this best result for them. In other words, maybe, maybe um, these, the person in this, situ this hypothetical that I'm talking about here, maybe they've already gone to get therapy before. And, and you find that if they've, if they've paid for therapy, that they're willing to do the work, et cetera, et cetera. And so you're able to uh, possibly, you know, um, uh, work with them easier. They're more open to coaching and change, what have you, right? But the point being that what you're trying to do is not find every customer that's in this situation, even though this right here, you know, it feels small, but trust me, there's millions of these women out here. Um, you, can, you can continue to segment down and find the customer that you have the most value to give to them, okay? So you've got to continue to narrow this down to where you want to take it and think of it like, okay, this is the, the first level, this is the second level, this is the third level, this is the fourth level. This is where I am targeting. And this is my value proposition here on this bullseye. This is my market, okay? And so like one of these we did was with a lady who was, co who was a fitness coach who was coaching women who had just had a baby on how to lose weight, who were suffering from postpartum depression, okay? So the power of this is finding this best customer for you then helps to inform your offer, which is your hot front end offer, okay? Now this offered vastly uh, changes based on the market. If you're in a market like with these women, your hot front end offer might be a thousand dollars. And the reason for that is because you know this this market doesn't spin the same way. If you're if you're if you're if your market is some sort of business offer and you're expecting to um, improve their business by some tremendous amount, then your hot front end offer could be 10k, right? It, it very well could be 10K. Uh, but the mistake that people make is they try to sell their back end year long program on the front end. And that is a huge mistake. So, what I've found with a hot front end offer is that there's some period of time, usually between six weeks and 10 weeks, that feels ideal for these customers, when you get over 10 weeks into 12 weeks and it's a quarter of the year, it starts to feel pretty long. And also it is, um, I would say maybe a little more, um, um, maybe a little more uh, challenging to uh, get the person to work quickly on their result. And so sometimes you lose them because you have given them too long to dawdle and procrastinate. So having a shorter window, like six to eight weeks, up to 10 weeks, usually gives people this length of time that will help them to get the result and actually succeed, okay? So figuring out this thing that you can do for this person, and you can get them a single result 
that feels powerful for them, that is your hot front end offer, okay? And that is what all of your messaging is going to be about. This is your gospel, okay? And so what you're talking about here is not about your um, beliefs about uh, your product. This is not selling your product. This is about the deeper <clears throat> uh, thing behind your product. So this is like you want to be talking in your marketing about the belief system that goes behind your product. So it could be something like, um, you know, you can be best friends with your daughter. Your daughter does not hate you. There is a way with blah, 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 blah. Instead of talking about, you know, I've got a six week program that helps daughters and moms. Like, like if one of the things that people um, have a, have a challenge with in their, um, in their businesses is feeling slimy when they're marketing and trying to sell themselves. It's that idea that they feel like a snake oil salesman because they're out there. They feel like they're always asking, 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 and all this stuff. Well, defining and getting clarity on your message, market, and offer, right? That gives you much more ability to proudly talk about your thing and understand that you are talking to these, in this case, to these women who have nobody giving them hope, nobody giving them the right answers. Everybody's giving them uh, BS that's not true. And so you make all of your marketing about your message, okay? And your message is about what's right and what's wrong. And it's about, you know, all the things that are, it's us versus them. So you pick all the bad guys, like maybe it's the doctors, maybe it's the school system, maybe it's, uh, you know, President Trump or Barack Obama or Joe Biden or whomever, right? So, so you pick the us versus them. And this is your, your gospel and your offer is like your way to make it to heaven. It is your, you know, um, uh, believe, repent and get baptized. That's your, that is your offer. And you're going to hold them by the hand and walk them into the water and baptize them. That's what your offer is. But your message is, is that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. He came to earth to save sinners and blah, 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 whatever else it is, right? So your message is the, the gospel that you're going to be able to preach and you're going to be able to talk, talk about this ad nauseum without getting um, bored, without, getting, without feeling embarrassed or ashamed or any of those so, sort of things, right? So that's the first project of clarity is to get clarity on your message market and offer. The second project of clarity is to get clarity on and to understand your business. Okay. So the, the things that have to do with your business are your model, the roles, and the plan. Okay. So the, the plan is about whether or not you want to build a lifestyle business or a scale business. The model is what model you choose to use, whether you want to be like a marketing business that's all about like leads and lead gen, whether you want to be a sales business, which is all about, um, you know, like a high ticket sales machine or the whether you want to be a delivery business which is really high ticket less less sales usually so so in a leads business that's where you're selling a course or something like that and you want very little contact with the with the prospect okay so this is like a a, a course type um uh, business Sales business is one where you have like a hot front end offer 
and then maybe a mastermind on the back or maybe not. A lot of these businesses, I know a guy, uh, some guys that are selling 25 units of a 10K course on the front end every week. So they're doing about a million dollars a month selling just a 10K course. So this is your, um, like uh, Russ Ruffino is a guy who sort of perfected this process. And then there's the delivery model, which I uh, sort of think of as like the Kevin Nations model, which is not many sales calls. The ones you're on are gonna be very warm to you and you're selling something that's very expensive. Usually 40K per year, uh, they're going to pay for a year of engagement and they're paying for, um, you know, some number of like, like Kevin Nations used to do it in an eight pay uh, of 5K or an eight pay of 10K, uh, whether you were in his chillionaire group or his family. And that is where you're going to be very involved with the people. You're going to have a smaller number of customers, but you're going to charge them a lot of money. Okay. So your role so getting clarity about which one of these you're more suited for is important because your role is different in each of these businesses. So your role in a course business is you're going to be creating ads all the time. You're going to be working with uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, media buyer or you're going to become a media buyer yourself and you're going to you know, be much more about uh, metrics and volume and, uh, all, you know, understanding the arbitrage of what you're doing. So you can be spending a lot on ads. You're going to be really, um, uh, I guess I've written this in the whole thing, but this is just for the leads model. You're going to become a great advertiser if you're about the leads model. If you're about the sales model, then it's, you're going to be, you're going to become a great sales manager and you're gonna deliver some, but probably hire coaches to help you with, uh, um, with the coaching. And, and your job and role is gonna be staying on the sales machine, making sure that they are getting good leads. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have a partial, uh, you're gonna have a partial interest in the, the, the media side and the marketing, and you're gonna have a partial interest in delivery but your focus, your main focus is going to be on sales. And so you're going to always either be uh, involved in sales yourself or running a team of salespeople who you are involved with and you're holding them accountable uh, yourself and so on and so forth. This, another great example of this is Jim Launch with Alex Hermosi. Uh, they run more of a sales model and, uh, and he works closely with the sales team, right? So then lastly, the delivery uh, uh, type model, um, you are not going to be very interested or, or involved in the, the media side of things, right? You are not going to be super uh, salesy. Um, you are only, your, your, your sales calls in many cases are going to be to qualify them versus the other way around. Your cost of acquisition is going to be two, three, four times what it is for most other people, but you're going to uh, uh, be able to charge high prices because you are very involved in the delivery of the service and you are usually giving them a lot of access to you, like your cell phone number, and you've got 20 clients that are paying you 50 grand a year and you're making a million dollars a year off of just 20 clients who you consult with, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> so, so understanding the model that you choose to work in, what your proclivities are, and then working that against the role that you want to have and the plan that you want, whether it's lifestyle or scale. Um, you can have a scale model selling courses. I mean, people do it. You can have a scale model uh, selling um, uh, sales. It's a little more hard to have a scale model based on delivery but people have pulled it off. I mean, you know, you, you've got companies um, like Strategic Coach, which is more of a, of a delivery type model, but they've done it through having, you know, hundreds of events per year and that's how they do it. So, so anyways, um, so having the second clarity project is to have clarity around your business. Then the third one is clarity around your numbers, okay? So 
um, clarity around your numbers is depending upon which of your three things that you, um, uh, three things that you have, um, um, chosen as your, um, as the, the three things that you have chosen as your, um, uh, you know, your, cho your choice of model for the thing. So the, uh, as far as, um, on your business, sorry, uh, the numbers that you have to have clarity around are benchmarks, your KPIs, and then your magic number, okay? So benchmarks, this is one of the things that is funny in our agency world that is a big deal is Lots of times we get a client and we're doing we're doing ads for them and you know something you know it's it's in our eyes it's going well and in their eyes it's not and it's because they don't have this is something that we've learned through the years that we have to set the expectations for them uh, as to what is good uh, like you know we'll we'll have people that we're getting you know seventy five dollar applications and they're having, you know, $150 uh, appointments and the quality is 80% or better. And they think that that's terrible. And it's because they have no concept of what the benchmarks are. And so they don't understand that, you know, $3 per click is good. They don't understand that, you know, 10% uh, uh, application rate is good. They don't understand that 50% show rate is good. It, it, like, like they're not great. Like these aren't great numbers, but they're good. Like to, to, if, if you have, if you're getting applications for $75 and half of those guys actually show up to the appointment, that's not so bad. You know, it's like the, you can always improve it and we always work to improve it, but these are benchmarks that we work on as the, the, um, you know, 40% opt-in rate off of Facebook ads. Like these are benchmarks that we, that we know from running lots and lots of ads that are pretty good. 80% quality rate is if we're in a niche. If we're in a general niche, it's 50%. Like if you're doing coaches, like for Taki Moore, we shot for 50%. For uh, Gym Launch, we shot for 80%. And the reason is, is because we have a much higher expectation that we are hitting, running the ads to the right people in that niche. So these are benchmarks that we understand. So you've got to be clear about the benchmarks in your business. If you're running YouTube ads, your benchmarks are going to be considerably different than if you're running uh, uh, Facebook ads. Then there's KPIs. This is your numbers. This is the numbers that you need to hit for your business, which is like the number of apps that you need per day, the number, uh, the cost per app that you need to, to maintain to have profitability because you got to pay salespeople and all this sort of stuff. And then the quality numbers that you want to measure per app. These are the things that you need to understand about your business to, to uh, and have clarity about for you to be able to spend more money on ads. And then lastly, this is something that I personally find, and it varies based on your business type and all those sort of things but there's a number in every business that is the magic number. And if we're hitting this number, then everything else is going to work. If, <clears throat> um, if you're running a lead gen business, usually that magic number is a cost per opt-in. If, and, and obviously a, 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 a 
at scale, right? Because you're going for scale there. If you're if you're running a sales oriented business, usually that number is a um, cost per appointment that you're able to achieve. If you're running a delivery focused business, then that number is usually a, a sales conversion percentage per phone calls taken. In other words, like you close at least 60% of the people you talk to, but you don't talk to very many. So, so the understanding the magic number in your business, and if you start getting off of that number, then the business is going to start to get off offline. But that number, it, it varies based on, on what type of business model that you're running, whether it's leads, sales, or delivery style business, okay? So you've got to figure out what that magic number is and have clarity around it for your business. So that is the clarity stuff. Then next is campaigns, acquisition, ascension, and retention, okay? So um, I'll get into, I'm not gonna go through all of this on this one video, but this will give you some ideas. So acquisition campaigns vary greatly based on the model that you're running as well. If you're running a lead model, then your acquisition campaigns are going to be usually an auto webinar or a free plus shipping or a low ticket sale. Okay, so something along that line is going to be your acquisition type campaigns. If you're running a sales model, then it's going to be an appointment funnel. And that could be something we call the introvert selling system. That could be like a mini webinar, auto webinar. That could be free plus shipping to call. That could be lead magnet to call. That could be case study to call. There's a lot of these that have been um, worked out for the sales model. Uh, another hot one right now is challenges and so on and so forth. So that is that, and then if you're running the delivery model, then you're looking at things like the ISS works for that, the Hydra, which is like a, a long-term video campaign, then uh, several education type funnels uh, also work for that. So this is on the acquisition side of things. Understand that you are working in an order right here of, of least to most warm in the sales thing. So, so, so like up here, people will buy without being super warm. Here, people have to be warmer for them to buy. And down here, people are not only solution aware, but they are provider aware. They know that you are the, the person, right? They know that you're the, the person for them. So that is getting a customer. Acquisition campaigns are, these are email campaigns. Oh. I don't know why that did that. Email campaigns plus they are, these are uh, delivery campaigns. So part of your delivery of your front end uh, service here or your front end product actually 
is what ascends them into the next level. So the idea that I like to think of when I talk about this is the idea of solve a problem, create a problem, okay? So maybe it's, you know, you've shown them how to start getting customers and sell them, but now you've got to show them how to put in a system to do that all the time. You got to show them how to hire salespeople to do it. Like at first, the first problem is how to, to sell it yourself. But then the second problem is now you're tired of being on the phone all the time. You want somebody else to do this for you. So how do you hire your back end? Your Ascension is, is the program that teaches you how to hire a sales team, how to manage a sales team, how to get them converting. The, the, maybe the sales process changes from you to them. Maybe instead of you being the person showing the person how to do it, maybe you're a recorded presentation that the salespeople walk them through, so on and so forth. So that is the Ascension uh, plan. And then lastly, the retention plan is where you want people to refer you, your, your super clients to refer you out, and you want there to be uh, uh, new things for them to be learning and, and want to stick with you forever. And how you do that is through giving them status inside of your um, community. It is uh, with events and things like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm glossing through some of this and you know we can get into more depth on it later, but this just gives you an idea like how you plan your backend mastermind and some of these things is what causes people to retain. Also, of course, one of the most important things that causes them to retain is for them to continue to get, you know, at least a 10x value on what they're paying you every year. If they get that, then it's much easier to keep them, okay? Then the last area here is context. And the context stuff is, is pretty interesting and fun and awesome. This is the, I have a thing called the context fulcrum that I taught at Black Belt and several other things uh, that I'll put here in the membership. But context is how you're viewed in the marketplace. And you can control this context in a narrow, uh, um, in a narrow field and have yourself viewed as the 800 pound gorilla. So you can watch the context fulcrum video later and that'll give you some ideas about that. But in the short term, uh, the three projects to control context are character, credibility, and connection. And this is the actual content that you put out into the marketplace, how it does this, okay? So character, this is your character that you build, your superhero persona, okay? And you have to build this out just like Marvel does. You have to have a villain or villains, it's cool if you have a lair. It's cool if you have super friends. It's cool if you have a kryptonite. I know some of these are DC uh, things, but you get the idea. It's cool if you have superpowers. Oh, crap. Uh, how did I do this? Uh, what did I do? Superpowers all this sort of stuff. These are things that you plan out. I have a training called the five dominoes, which explains how, uh, um, uh, called the five dominoes that explains how to start building out some of these stories and, and these character things. These are very important. The next is credibility, right? So you wanna demonstrate, so, so you want to define your character in the marketplace so that people understand who you are clearly and understand what you're about. Your credibility, you wanna demonstrate your credibility and how you do that is by doing your magic, right? You can do that by like doing your magic publicly. You can do that by, you can demonstrate credibility by uh, having high profile peers that you talk to and by showing the mentors that you've studied with. So, so creating content between yourself and peers between yourself and your students or your clients and content between yourself and your mentors 
That is what demonstrates connect, uh, the credibility in the market. And then lastly, connection. This is content that you put out that humanizes you and makes you a regular Joe. This is the content that um, is, is like all of your hobbies and your quirks and your weird things that you're into. This is like me talking about cigars all the time, me talking about scotch, me talking lately about motorcycles because I've bought two motorcycles in the last two months. Um, uh, it, and this is the stuff that makes people, it, 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 you're not doing this stuff to make people uh, envy you or jealous, although you know that happens sometimes, but, but the point of it is to demonstrate that you are just a regular guy and, and get excited about a motorcycle or about um, uh, a cigar or hanging out, going to the masters, any of those kind of things. So, so that is the context. And if you control it properly, then what it does is it sets you up as the 800 pound gorilla. The example I give in the context fulcrum uh, video is about whether or not um, you would pay, like how easy would it be for the regular um, CrossFit guy down the street to sell you on a $10,000 package versus how easy would it be for Arnold Schwarzenegger to sell you on a $10,000 package? Much easier for Arnold, right? Because in the context of weightlifting and fitness, he is like at the top, top, top. He's the 800 pound gorilla. And it's because in that context, he has, he is seen to have the most status. And so that's the, the power of the, the thing. And so, so that is a quick uh, explanation of the genius model. I uh, have other videos. I, I can't find them. Uh, I don't know where they're at, but I figured this would give you some um, idea about this and you can maybe springboard with any questions and stuff like that, that you have off of that. So hope that helps and talk to you soon.